So here I've got a Kodak Retina 1 camera. This is the model um, 126 and uh, made in the mid 30s, mid to late 30s. This one here is here for a service of course. It's got a number of minor issues. The film advance does appear to work. Um, the focus is very stiff and I take note that when it arrived the focus was not set to infinity. This was sitting out at this position and of course on this camera it should be sitting around here at the 7 o'clock position not the 5 o'clock position. Later cameras had the focus adjusting focus knob out here. It does have its plunger present um, but as is common with most of these little plungers it's a little bit sticky in its action. The shutter's a bit sluggish, the lens looks a bit hazy and dirty. Um, of course it's not a coated lens. Um, let's see how does it even I'll see if it cocks and fires. Let's set it at a I'll set a tenth. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit uh, hit and miss with its shutter speeds. But I think that this camera should work fairly well. Um, film advance is good, that's always a good point. Nothing looks damaged. Um, I've been told that there might be a light leak issue with it, so that's something I'll be checking very closely. Um, at first glance the bellows look to be in good order. As I get deeper into the camera, I'll be checking to make sure that the bellows haven't started to come adrift from the body casting at the back. That's a possibility. It's also a possibility there's a pinhole there that I can't see at the moment. I'll be uh, searching closely with a very bright torch to see if I can find any leaks there. The alternative is if there is, really was any sign of light leak, other suspect areas are when you have a badly fitting back door where it's loose, that can cause a problem. Typically speaking, there are no foam rubber or felt seals around these doors. They simply rely on the fact that they're a tight fitting door or everything painted black and that those they run down into channels in the body. So you know, light can't easily bounce backwards and forwards and get through there and end up on your film. However, we shall see. I've only seen one image that was taken with this camera um, and that showed to me no signs of light leaks. There was a fair amount of flare, uh, particularly given look, looking at the image I could see where the flare had probably come from and looking at the state of that lit, hazy looking lens, uh, flare would certainly be a a major cause of problems with images, particularly when you've got a high contrast image or you've got a uh, bright light source, typically the sun or if in, a dark, in indoor conditions it could be a light source off to one side, just outside the normal film area that you would see in the finder. Um, just light striking the lens obliquely it can light it up and that destroys contrast and often can give you funny effects. Anyway, I'm going to get this camera apart and see what it needs. From the top of the camera, well the first thing I want to do is remove the rewind knob if it'll unscrew. So I'll put something through the forks and it does not want to undo. I don't desperately need to get that off, I do need to have my the, the advance knob off and, however. So, let's put a, if I put a spanner on this shaft, so I can stop the shaft from rotating. Oh, look at that. The advanced knob came off without hardly even any struggle. That's good. Most commonly I have to get wrap this in leather and put a uh, hose clamp around it, do it up very tight and that gives me enough purchase to unscrew it. That's left hand threaded of course. 
a single screw here holds down this top cover that screw head is clogged up with dirt and dried grease so it's difficult getting the screwdriver to engage there we go I notice this camera has an accessory shoe it may be original yes I'd say it would be because there are clearance holes here in the top cover and I've taken that off because I need to get to this screw on the side of the finder easily because I'm going to have to remove the finder to clean it so starting here the frame counter I'll undo the screw from that and here we have three pieces if you count the screw the screw the counter disc and this spring that's very sticky the grease looks very nasty um, things are moving better than you might expect though that's good right I've got to strip all the stuff off the top because I need to uh, get to a screw under here when we go to remove the bellows so taking these pieces off one by one let's see if we can lift these ratchet wheels off here they're coming up so I'm laying these out in order and the right way up the ratchet wheels go in opposite directions it's not hard to tell which way they're supposed to go I'm going to remove these this bracket here now so I can remove my two levers from the front of the camera there's a spring here, a return spring for it, I've just lifted that unhooked that we have one lever a spacer underneath that then the second lever and that has a thin washer underneath it, a thin spacer we'll have that out I'm going to unscrew this because this spring here is easily damaged so I'll just unscrew that screw post and take the spring with it and lift off this wheel it's got a washer underneath it, a sort of a daisy shaped washer there's the wheel underneath that couples to that, all this grease is very nasty it's um, quite sticky this is the AR lever and this lever can come off too now see if we can get this disc and gear pried up that's good lay those out in order three screws hold the film advance shaft bush in place now 
Now normally that rewind knob I would remove that because it makes it easier to clean. But that chrome brass shaft may have gone brittle with age and I don't need to break anything. I won't have any spares. I'll just lay these parts out. Our viewfinder. Two chrome screws, one either side. This one's easy to get at. Its mate on the other side is not so easy to get at. It's worth lifting the rewind knob so you can get the screwdriver in close to the shaft as you're going in at less than an ideal angle there. In an ideal world I'd probably have a very long screwdriver with a fine blade. Right, the viewfinder can come off. It allows us to clean these components. I think I can just clean that in place. I don't think there's any pressing need to get that off. The take-up spool should just lift out. I'm checking the action of our sprocket shaft here to see if there's any problem with it. It's dirty, but it certainly moves freely, so I'll clean that in place. To remove the shutter. I need to remove the shutter from the camera. The lens, shutter and lens assembly. Before I do that, I'm going to peer in there and see if I can see any obvious light leaks. No, I saw nothing suggestive of a light leak there. Let's see if I can undo the retaining ring. Oh. Yes. It's um not coming off easily. It's just loose. It may be some paint or something on it. There we go. It's off. I'll pop my shutter and lens to one side. With the retaining ring, there's nothing unusual to see with that. Oh, there is some paint around the top. Yeah, so somebody had, uh, after servicing it, had, had put a wipe of paint, paint around the retaining ring to disguise the marks they'd put on it during getting it off the camera, probably. Right, so here, let's have a look at our focus mount. Now that's very stiff. I'll mark that so it goes back in exactly the same place. Usually I just scribe an alignment mark across it. It's probably already got other people. Sometimes they've got multiple marks that people have made. So normally I just take my rule and use it as a guide and I'm running a scribe line I run two scribe lines from the focus scale ring to the outer helical. Now I know where the focus scale ring 
fits to the outer helical at the infinity position and it means that under normal circumstances if the lens was correctly focused prior to stripping down the camera if everything is put back in the same positions the lens will be focused after servicing the camera that can come off I've got four screws here down inside the holes now they will hold the bellows to the back of the front standard so I'll unscrew those that should allow the bellows to pull back into the body yeah they drop away that's good I have four screws here hold the focus mount to the back of the front standard and I can lift out the focus mount complete I'll gather those four screws up before they go missing And taking the focus mount I will gather up the four screws that went through it and held the bellows to the back of the front standard all this is quite sticky with the old grease I can lift out the inner and outer helical now I need to make an alignment mark on the inner and outer helical so I can get them back in the same relative positions I see now that somebody's made alignment marks on here which I hadn't noticed before what I'm trying to do is get both surfaces level because that gives me a reference point at the moment they don't want to go level because there's too much gunge on that grease and too much dirt so it doesn't want to turn that far but it will this should pass through there either way just means there's a bit of something stuck in these th multi-start thread here somewhere is blocking that from revolving further it's pretty gungy right that's loose enough now I just need to adjust this so I've got the inner and outer helical are at the same level that's there and then my two alignment marks that I made I can extend them across the inner helical now so I know that the inner helical and the outer helical when their surfaces are level align with those marks and I also know that the focus scale ring <coughs> aligns with the outer helical at those marks so those pieces now can come to bits because I know how to put them back together that brings us back to the camera body I've got to remove the leather from the base of the camera so I'll start with the depth of field scale remove that I should be able to lift the leather off the base of this camera completely there's a cut of some sort across it here might be a scratch I think that'll peel off if it's too difficult to peel it off um, you're in danger of stretching the leather 
in which case it's very difficult to get it to sit flat again afterwards. It is desirable to get the leather off entirely if you can because otherwise you'll end up with a line across it where you've that marks where you've peeled it back to. That's it, that's off in one piece. Leather is much more forgiving than leatherette. Right, so one screw for the hinge pin here. One at the top. Now this door has a spring on it. So I'm going to collapse the struts. If I can get them to collapse. I'm going to put my rule down the back here where that spring is so that it doesn't scratch the paint as it comes out. That's it. And I can unhook the door from that slot at the front of the struts. There we have it. That's our door off. Four screws hold our struts in the camera body. One is hiding here. We'll see what that's like. Yes, it will move today. The ones at the base under the leather often don't want to move. It's because they're well glued in with the adhesive used to hold the leather in place. Got one at the top of the camera here. I'll close the struts up while I work on this. And in the film cassette chamber, there's two screws there. The struts should lift out of the body at this stage. They do. Now I can look at the state of them. Well, I can immediately see that the struts are a little bit bent. The inner strut should be dead flat. And that one's certainly convex, and so is that one. Um, so yeah, they've had a bit of a hard life. And the body's stripped down about as far as it needs to be. Now looking at this. I would say that the bellows have been re-glued at some stage. The adhesive I see there is, is a re redo. Someone's done that. It's been done and possibly in historically recent times too perhaps. I'm a bit concerned about the state of the bellows at the bottom. I'm just checking to see that if there's any damage there. It looks to me as though when they were glued back down, the last pleat also picked up some adhesive and uh, stuck to the base and then of course it's been pulled out and that might have damaged the leather slightly there. I'll have to check that quite closely. So what I'm dealing with there is potentially damage that has been done to it. 
I'll check that against the sun. No, there's no sign of any light leaking there. That's okay. So that's just somebody else's repair that I'm seeing there, but there's nothing particularly bad about the repair that's been done. Now I'm just going to get the dust out of the body at this stage. Anywhere that's dry and has no grease, you can use a, a nice clean dry paint brush. It's good for getting rid of the dust, loosening the dust, and you can blow it, blow it away. I'm not going to remove the bellows and re-glue them. I don't think there's a problem with that adhesive. I think that that's sticking things there very well. So I've just got to clean all my body casting up. And you can probably see inside the body there, it's particularly dusty and dirty in there. So around the door I can clean that with a paintbrush. And here I've got to use uh, cotton buds, Q-tips, with some naphtha on it, just to make sure I remove all that old grease and rubbish. And once all the grease is gone, of course, I can get in there with a brush and just brush away the, the grit that's lying around loose. But otherwise, it's looking pretty positive. There's uh, certainly nothing untoward here. I'm looking at the state of the leather. Just checking if there's any sign it's coming adrift. Yeah, here there is. You can see that leather's just a little bit loose there. Leather can surprise you, it can be apparently all happy and well stuck and you come back the next day and pieces are falling off. So I'll have to uh, decide which way this is falling. It's certainly not a bad example by any means. Alright, so my work's in front of me now is to clean all this. I won't try and remove the rewind knob, I'll just clean all this in place and lubricate that. It's just not worth it. I could easily end up shearing that uh, screw off the top of that shaft and of course I, I won't have a spare for that. Right, I'll clean up these bits. Um, there's nothing exciting in cleaning things up, mostly it's just cleaning things off with naphtha. And when you get to something like this that grease will be very hard, so it'll be cleaning it off with naphtha and cotton buds and wooden toothpicks to scrape that old hard and dried grease out. And lots of work with the naphtha. And on this piece, cleaning them as much as I can, assembling them, pouring naphtha on them, working the thread backwards and forwards to loosen up any other stuff, and cleaning them down again until they are clean and run smoothly. Alright, I've got things cleaned up now and I can start putting things back into the body. So I'll start with the struts. Now the struts I have straightened up. Um, some parts were bent a bit out of shape. Nothing dramatic. Just enough to be a nuisance. So, normally I just grease the back part of those guides. Um, there's that much handling involved that it's, you end up rubbing it off the front part as you try to get things fitted back into the camera. And I'll just get see if I can get these settled down into the body. Just looking at the state of those struts. Are they, I'm not sure they're as straight as they might be. Let's see if I can These are brass and they're fairly flexible. These ones have been a little bit mutilated. I think that'll do. Possibly when the whoever was gluing the bellows back in was fighting with them really. That's quite a possibility. It, uh, you normally would remove the struts from the camera in order to put the bellows back in or take the bellows out or to glue the bellows back but if someone is reluctant to go that far they might try and work round it 
I'm just sorting the four screws that hold the struts mechanism in place to make sure that the two prettiest ones go in the film cassette chamber and three of them are really there's nothing to pick between them The one at the top, the one at the bottom is easy to find because it's the only one that has glue and paint on it, or glue in this case. Sometimes the remains of leather. it up tight and it's made at the top collapse the uh, struts and put the two into the film cassette well Let's get one started Get the other one started and then do them up tight. And they're both started. I've cleaned and lubricated the rewind knob so that's nice and smooth in its operation now. So our bellows struts are back in position and they pull up into the erected position quite nicely. I'll now do this in the right order I suppose. I've cleaned this and I've got most of the grease out of it but I can still feel it's that there's a bit of drag there. There must obviously still be dried grease in those deep in the, the threads. I think I'll go and soak those in some degreaser. Well I'm happy with the uh, feel of those threads now. That helical thread seems to be good. So normally I put some helical grease in about five or six patches around the thread like that then just work it in that feels nice and smooth check that I haven't moved anything, no the alignment's good so I'll put some helical grease around the outside touch in the guide slots there and that can go into the mount now and the mount went that way up so there it is that's assembled and I'll just check the movement of that that smith feels nice and smooth I'll wipe a little bit of grease around the outside edge because that's where it bears up against the inside of that front standard. That piece of felt's a bit stretched and not wanting to stay where it's put. I think we can deal with that. So four screws hold this in place. Mm, the tweezers seem to be extra sticky. 
a bit of grease or something on them. So I'll get these screws in place. Check that the focus still moves smoothly. Then I can collapse the uh, struts and put the through, screws through to hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Check that that felt piece went in correctly. I'm not sure about it there. Yes, that's good. There are four screws in. And run them down. And go around and make sure all four are tight. Pull the struts out to the lock position. It's inclined to pop open, it is. That's interesting. It shouldn't be doing that. That one doesn't pop into position, it hasn't got enough tension. Alright, back where I started. 